Let's welcome to the stage the world's oldest child actor, Mr. Franco. <laughs> Great-looking room. Uh, I, I gotta be honest with you guys. I am having the absolute time of my life doing stand-up comedy. Uh, I, I can't think of anything else I'd rather do. I got dementia. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. Oh uh, man, this has been like the scariest three years I can remember. Mostly due to heavy drug use. Uh, no, anytime I cough, just sneeze, I'm on the phone of the doctor. Is it COVID? Is it COVID? Is it COVID? He's like, Glenn, relax. It's just Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully protected. I had COVID as a kid. <laughs> and here's the deal. People say the vaccine causes autism in children. Let's be real. Any kid I have at my age is going to be autistic. <laughs> <laughs> and remember a year ago with monkeypox? They told men who had sex with men to run out and go get the vaccine. Now, first of all, don't ever take medical advice from a comedian. But a buddy of mine went out, he got the monkeypox vaccine, and two days later, he died. His wife shot him. <laughs> she had no idea he was having sex with men. Yeah. This is great, you guys came out. It's Hell's Kitchen. You, you're brave to come to Hell's Kitchen. We're right next door to Times Square. And there is so much gun violence in America that Times Square is officially a gun-free zone. Yeah, so if you're in Times Square, you can rest assured. If somebody shoots you, they are definitely getting a ticket. <laughs> yeah, this is Hell's Kitchen. I moved to Hell's Kitchen in 1983. The same year cracked it. In 83, I was afraid to walk through this neighborhood. Now I can't afford to. If you saw Forrest Gump, 42nd Street was just like that. It was porno theater. Porno theater. 24 hour massage. That's a long massage. <laughs> in 83, it was easier in Manhattan to get an assault rifle than it was to get an apartment. So I got the rifle, <laughs> went to the realtor, <laughs> had no trouble getting an apartment. <laughs> But the one thing they didn't tell me about my apartment was that it had a cockroach problem. Yeah, oh. You know you have a cockroach problem. When you walk into your kitchen at 4 o'clock in the morning and flick on the light, and they flick it off. <laughs> Man, I didn't mind when they were eating garbage, but I drew the line when they started sending me out for pizza. <laughs> Actually, they were in my apartment for so long, their names were on the lease. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like I got a fucking lease. Uh, I make so much money doing stand-up comedy that I get phone calls from my landlord like, Glenn, this is your landlord, Shepard Spunt. Uh, <laughs> I was expecting something from you in the mail this week, and I have not received it. I'm like, oh, Mr. Spunt, I know what we're talking about. Uh, I went down to the post office, and uh, they will not accept a pipe bomb. <laughs> yes. He stopped calling me, now I just have to fucking deal with these lawyers. Oh, man.
Here's a weird thing. My doctors asked me to take this special test. We were supposed to crap in a bucket and mail it back to them. <laughs> and it's prepaid. So I, I did the thing, and I brought it down to UPS. And uh, they go, where's that going? And I'm just going right back to the lab that sent it to me. And the guys go, well, you got to fill out a form. I say, it's already paid for. It's going back to who it came from. The guy goes, yeah, but you have to fill out the form. And I'm like, I can send this to anybody in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Shepherd Sponge. <laughs> Yeah, we did what we can with that. Oh gosh, uh, I I left my job right before the pandemic. Uh, things started going downhill uh, when they told me I had to attend a seminar on sexual harassment, and I said I didn't because I was already good at it. <laughs> <laughs> And then they made me go out and buy Rosetta Stone because I ran out of languages to tell them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> so I finally had it. I said, this is the day I'm done. I, I said, screw you. I, I slammed the door. I walked out. I said, they'll never fucking see me again. And that was really stupid because uh, I was working from home. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, things got so bad for me financially, I had to move back in with my parents. <laughs> They're dead! <laughs> That's a creepy arrangement. Yeah, I don't have a 401k. My retirement plan is all time. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. You actually get carte blanche to ask people stupid questions. Uh, excuse me. Is this Tuesday? <laughs> or a spoon? <laughs> yeah, I got stopped after a show once. Guy goes, Glenn, you gotta stop doing that joke. Uh, you're gonna piss off the Alzheimer's Foundation. <laughs> yeah, like they'll fucking argue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's the weird thing. I, I actually do have a secondary job. Uh, uh, I am a member of the Screen Actors Guild, currently on strike, thank you very much. Uh, actually, the Writers Guild is also on strike at the moment. And uh, so just a, a brief apology. Uh, because of the strike, I have not written any new jokes <laughs> for like the last three and a half years. So uh, I knew this strike was coming. Uh, but, but here's the deal. I have been a background actor in, in over 300 movies. and. Uh, I also have a degree in theater, so technically I'm a method expert. <laughs> but I have a 13-page biography on the internet movie database. Ever since I learned they let you edit that yourself. <laughs> so there's one rule uh, about being an extra in a motion picture, and that is you cannot initiate a conversation with a star. If they talk to you first, you're more than welcome to reply, but you cannot start that conversation. So one day I get called to play a mourner at a wake. An Academy Award Best Actress, Holly Hunter, walked up to me and goes, when they read the eulogy, you will come and comfort me. They call action, I walk up to Holly Hunter, and I start gingerly stroking her arm. And then I got a little ball. I bent over and I whispered in her ear, I am so, so sorry for your loss. And she whispered back, thank you. Thank you, you're so kind. There's no punchline here, I'm bragging. <laughs> she could have said, shut the fuck up, you're an extra. <laughs> but here's the deal, the guy doing the eulogy was Tony Shalhoub from Monk and Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. yeah, 35 years ago, he and I played twins in an equity show. I must have taken like 40 showers with that guy. So the whole time he's doing the eulogy, I'm making eye contact, hoping he's going to recognize me. He never did. I got morosely depressed. And right before they arrested me, <laughs> I got blackout drunk. And they told me 
I was stark naked outside of Tony Shalhoub's trailer, screaming, Do you recognize me now, Tony? <laughs> Do you recognize me now? <laughs> and I got arrested because I was not allowed to initiate that conversation. <laughs> Heck, I'm in Glen Cohen, and you've been a room full of hot, wild people. <laughs>